Get ready for a slow triad demo. Let's get started. I'm pretending that I am in the 2015 Landscape Painter of the Year competition and I am going to paint the London Bridge. This was where the people were set up to do their the finals. There were six of them and I wanted to see how I would do if I had been set up there. Uh, so in a second I'm going to slow this way down and we're going to do some triad work together which will really demonstrate my sign off. Mix for, uh, mass for value, mix for color. But for right now what I'm doing is I, I've done the immediate drawing and I'm kind of blocked out for myself where those lightest lights are. And then we'll get started on the work. Here we go. I thought this would be a good opportunity to slow things down and work on some triads. What I put in here is I've mixed up ultramarine blue with some permanent bros. I'm using a round, probably a number 12 brush. And, um, and I'm also going to add some Hansa yellow to it. So when I talk about massing for value, that's what I'm doing here. I have a mass. That whole rectangle is the mass. And I'm going to use three colors to fill in that mass. It's quite, as I see it, it's a little slightly darker at the top. So that's where I start with the purple and then use a, uh, like an ombre to come on down and create that entire mass. I don't mix the colors. What I do is I place them near each other and they blend into each other. You have to have a really loaded brush to do this. The other thing that you have to do is have a fairly consistent uh, washes, fairly consistent paint in terms of its thickness. So that this rose that's going in right now, I would have mixed a puddle of, um, I'm not sure what color is coming in next, we'll see. Um, what color is coming in? Probably that purple again. Yeah, because it was getting darker. So now the purple, but they're about the same consistency. In other words, uh, they're about the consistency of, I would say, milk, almost cream. And I'm going to add, and then I would have had a third pile, which probably has more ultramarine blue in it, and that's going to be the bottom. So what you're seeing here is what I talk about in my sign out, which is master value mix for color. Oh, it must have been a little bit brighter right on that edge, so I'm putting in some Hansa yellow there. What I do is I don't rub. I don't allow the brush to go over the color I've already put down. Right? So you have to be decisive. The color, the color goes in, and then uh, no, no rubbing. It's more placing than rubbing. And you have to work fairly, fairly quickly because, as you know, if you don't, it, your paint will dry a little bit, and you end up with one of those blooms. I don't think blooms are terrible, but... Um, you don't want to have too many of them, I suppose. It could be distracting. Depend and you know, it all depends on what you're trying to do. So there's an example of two masses. And what I did was I mixed for colors. So when I say, remember to uh, mix for color, mass for value, or I think I say it the other way, mass for value, mix for color. I found my masses. And what I did was I mixed up three colors to fill into those masses. Now, right along that edge, it probably was a little bit darker. So that's a little bit of an ultramarine blue mix going in. Now this is about twice, I've, I've lowered the speed to twice as fast as I go. So like I said, you have to be fairly quick because the paint is drying. I work on Arsh paper, which is 140 pound proof. And I also work always, I shouldn't say always, but nearly always wet paint into wet paint. I don't wet the paper. I do when I get to the sky and we'll see that. So now I'm trying to figure out my next mass. It's very light above where the, the crowns of those towers are. Now I could have mixed up grays. I can match the photograph. I never want to match the photograph, but I do want to match the value. So I could have mixed up a gray and I could almost picture in my head exactly what that painting would look like. And there would have been nothing wrong with it at all. I would have had to really slow down and find as many mix as many colorful grays as I possibly could. And I decided I didn't want to do that. I think I didn't want to do that because I couldn't figure out how the painting would not be completely dull. So I do like to, I do like grays, I do like neutrals, but I tend to use them if I have something else that's very colorful that's going to be in the painting. I think the thing that works about the photograph is that 
well, one of the things that works is the red bus that's going across the bridge. It looks very, very red, and the reason it looks very, very red is because everything around it is neutralized. Everything else is gray, except for the blue of the sky, and that's really effective. And I knew that I wasn't going to get that effect. I was going to actually lose that effect. It's, you have to make your decisions. You know, everything's strategic, and I knew that I was going to sacrifice a really nice moment by putting so much color into my masses because the color of the bus is just not going to be that impactful because I've made the color of the towers so saturated. So now we're working on, again, mass for value, mix for color, and I've got a darker element where the, where the face of the tower is. But you could just want you to watch the brush stroke a little, brush, brushing a little bit just to see how you can lay in a triad. Again, using three colors to create a mass, which you do a lot when it comes to foliage. Uh, you do it a lot when it comes to, gosh, what else? Um, I, I, I would say I do it almost, almost all the time. It just becomes sort of something to think about. If you think about shape, then it's not that big a leap to think about, all right, how can I accomplish finding that shape using more than one color. But it's, I want to show that the form has turned a little bit because it's, you know, the tower is just a giant box. I want to show that it's turned a little bit so it's now um, a little bit darker on this side. Now what I'm doing is, what I'm doing more than anything is knowing. I know that this is the case and I know that if I make this side the exact same value and colors as the side that I already put in, I'm not going to get that effect as if it's a, a box, as if it's turning in space. So there's a certain amount that you can't pick up visually as much as you just kind of know. And I know that even though they're very, very close in color, which is why I use the same colors to create the masses, it's a little bit darker on this side because the sun isn't hitting that side. One nice thing about this type of round brush, it's a Kalinsky Red Sable brush. You know, a really good brush like this will allow you to put a lot of paint on it, and it also allows you to, um, it also will come to a point if you want it to. So you can do some fine work, too. Normally, I tend to like to use round brushes, but I have to admit, uh, I mean flat brushes, but I have to admit a round brush gives you um, a smoother effect when it comes to um, triad work. So now I knew that I had to do something about the, uh, the bridge above. I guess it's a bridge. And I decided that I was going to dull things down. You know, we talked before on this channel that if everything is color, then nothing is color. And I knew that I wanted to create some neutrals as well. So in order to do that, I'm yet yeah, using my limited palette. I'm probably using the exact same colors that I used to do that triad work only I'm mixing them together to kind of tip color into some kind of gray. I think that's what's going to come out on the brush. I'm pretty sure you can see how saturated that brush is. I can see how wet it is from here. Oh, no, it didn't go there. I thought I was going somewhere else. That's not where I went. Where I went instead was where it's darker underneath, underneath that bridge. And there's a lot more ultramarine blue in that mix. A little bit of the rose but more ultramarine blue. Now, you can see I didn't do a lot of triad work here. It's not necessary. It's not that big a mass. And that's effective enough. What's important there is the shape. So I won't guess. I have to look and see what's going to happen next because I can't remember. All right, so it's lighter above where that mass is, and so I'm using that rose again. So it's really kind of looking at ultramarine blue as my dark, rose as my medium, and my Hansa yellow as my light. And wherever I see the light kind of tripping around, that's where I'm going to put the, the colors. First I determine the mass, and then I determine what, what, where the colors are going to go but I'm still dedicated to each individual mass. This is a little house that's underneath there. 
and that would be ultramarine blue with a little bit of rose in it as well. So everything that's being accomplished here is being accomplished with just three colors. And you really can paint almost any painting with just three colors. It does require quite a bit of mixing. But the unity that you'll get from that limited palette is, is very, very nice most of the time. Okay, so I'm going to put a new shadow over here on the side as well, and that's an ultramarine with a little bit of rose in it. But I'm not getting very involved in the triad work here. I don't need to. It's not that big a mass, and like, uh, and I've already, I probably didn't see it. It's not poor that more that it's not that I decided not to do. It's probably that I don't do it unless I see it. If I see that the light is changing in a mass, then I'm going to. Um, Put, put in paint to describe that. But if I can't see it, sometimes I'll think that I feel it and I'll make a, a shift in the color. But obviously I didn't do that here. Here's a good example of turning the brush upside down. You know, there must have been a reason for that. And I think one of the reasons is lots of times in order to describe a form, it really helps if you move the brush in the direction that the form is created. And that's actually a round form that's underneath there. And so I, I'm not saying that I cognitively decided to do it, but I realized in watching this very slow playback that I turned the brush in the, in the direction that the form would have been made. And that, you can imagine how helpful that is when it comes to painting fruit. You know, if you were to paint an apple with up and down strokes instead of strokes that kind of go across and around the form, you're just gonna have a very different effect. So there's a lot that happens that's kind of sensory as you're painting, and you become more attuned to it over time, and then when you become adept, you kind of forget that you're even attuned to it. And so watching this slowly makes me aware. <laughs> like, oh, that's interesting. When did, I, when did I learn to do that? That was a good idea. Oh, it flies by so quickly because, you know, in your mind, you're making a, a million other decisions and plans. But so far... We're doing what my sign off is, um, mixing for color, masking for value. Something happened there. Yeah, that was, oh, that's that bus. I, I was trying to make a decision about the bus. I knew the red wasn't gonna work. Not, not wasn't gonna work, but wasn't gonna be effective because of how colorful everything else is. I still wonder what, what, what might have been a more effective color. I almost think maybe, hmm. I just want to say like a cadmium with a little bit of, it's just something that tilted a little bit more toward orange, but it would have to be dark. And I was really reticent to bring in something like a burnt sienna at this point, because I haven't used anything like that in the painting so far. Burnt sienna is a nice choice for a value shift because it can be very warm in the dark areas, but it also has a tendency to dull everything down. And I thought, keep it simple. So far you're using three colors, you know, stay with the plan. So that's what I did. So this is a really complex subject, and my hat goes off to the people who were in the in the competition and were able to hold it together on that day and paint outside with people talking to them and with with um, the conditions of light changing. That plein air painting is is uh, really tough. But the few times that I have done plein air painting, the results have been really, really good. So pretty soon here, we're gonna we're gonna start back up at a at a rabbit's pace. When you edit these, you get a turtle for slow, and then you get a rabbit for going real fast. We'll start going fast again, and we'll just zip through. You've noticed I, I haven't made any test stabs on this painting most of the time. In past demos, I will make test dabs as I work, and at the end of my uh, work, there'll be a piece of paper there on the left-hand side that's just full of uh, test dabs that I've used before applying them to the work. But I, I didn't need to do it today. I could feel, I could, I could already sense exactly what my values were and how to mix for them. So um, I wasn't being lazy. I just kind of just didn't even think about doing it.
yeah, here here's probably going to be the neutral that I was talking about before, and then things will speed up. Yeah. So that's going to be a gray that's mixed up from the three colors that I've used in the triad. And if I had p taken a gray from a tube, it would be effective, but it really won't coordinate as well as if I mix my own gray. So that's a fairly warm gray because it has quite a bit of yellow in it. So that gray is made up of the three colors that I used in, in the triads that are used in those big columns. Now we're going to speed up. There we go. So I'm pretty happy with that gray. And like I said, it, it, you know, if everything's color, then nothing's color. And the back, all those back buildings have to be a little bit gray and neutral as well. So I'm mixing up sort of a bluish gray and also a reddish gray and a brownish gray. They don't vary in value very much, but it was really important to have a variety back there. So now the big... Big, kind of the big moment. You know, every painting has moments. I think it's those big shadows that make the, this particular photograph a good photograph to work from. So it was fun to put those those in. You know, then, then you finally have something dramatic happening. And you think to yourself, oh yeah, that was the reason I wanted to paint this particular photograph in the first place. And then things will carry on from here. So this was my, um, this was my second try at the finals of the uh, landscape painter of the year and I'm in oh now we have to turn upside down for the sky now I knew if I put in a matte sky meaning make it all blue it was just going to make everything way flatter it would it would have matched the photograph but I don't want to do that so here's some big triad work going on here I it starts out with like a Naples yellow at the bottom there's some permanent rose and then a watered down ultramarine blue I wanted to create kind of an atmosphere. And then I used those colors to, to mix up some of the green that I saw happening at the top of those buildings and also down, down in the water. So that's moving along nicely. But I can tell Things are starting to decision. Most most decisions have been made now, and because most decisions have been oh, there's the bus. Yeah, that's not a bad choice for the bus. And now I, I'm fighting to find some shapes that will balance off the extreme sort of uh, upside down E that is the towers. And I knew that that had to be negative space. I wasn't very happy with these clouds, though. I went away overnight and came back and, and worked on it some more and came out with a more linear solution. But for right now, it kind of works. Now I'm just finishing up, kind of finishing touches, putting in some real darks that haven't been there yet. And then I'm going to show my first response to what I would have done if I was the landscape painter of the year in the actual competition. And then I'll show you this, this piece when it's final. I do like that it goes off the paper on the left-hand side. Yeah, that was my first one. See, now those neutral towers, I did the same thing. I still masked for color, mixed for value, mixed for Color mass for value, yeah, they're grayer, and it makes the red of that bus redder. That's, a, that's effective there. I think I like that. And here's the second one, where I went back and made adjustments to the sky. And you can see the first response as well as the second response there. So you can take the photograph, if you want to, and do your own and pretend that you are the, entered in the final of the Landscape Painter of the Year 2015, and time travel with me and, and have some fun. Remember to keep the whites your paper white, the paint's wet, master value mix for color. See you next time. Bye-bye.